it's about these kids, man. It's about giving our kids an exposure of uplifting them and showing them that people do truly care and want them to do good things and be successful. That's what this is all about. Character development, um, life skills. This was a good teaching ground for that. No question about it. So often our kids don't get that exposure. How do you get better if you don't get exposed to it? I mean, you got to put them in elements and opportunities that they may never have an opportunity for and sometimes that they feel uncomfortable doing so they can get comfortable doing it, you know? So, that's what's important to me. So just to rewind a bit, tell me what this event was for. Well, first of all, it's what I coaching alliance organization where I recognize eight high schools, urban schools, inner city schools to put them together to be a team to help one another to help these kids. Because so often you get kids at a school that are very good, but you may have a coach don't help recognize their kid because they plan against the kid, which is foolish. So what we want to do is make sure everybody's on the same accord. And the big goal of this whole dynamic is to give our kids an opportunity to go to college, like somebody gave me. You know, if I came out that in Pavage area, Dodds Webby Housing Projects, if I can go to University of Missouri and get a degree and go on and do something in my life, every kid in there has the same opportunity. How did you feel watch, watching and seeing all these young men walk through the door and uh, show themselves in that positive light? Big you man, you don't understand. I'm smiling today, Tim. I'm telling you, but you know what? So often our kids get this label of not caring, you know, not wanting to do the right thing and, and get this, this bad reputation of just not being good people. These kids looking for positive things. They want someone to help them. They want it. And I, and I saw those kids sitting here being recognized. But not only on the field, but when you heard a lot of those coaches, when they were talking about their kids, they were talking about success in the classroom, good citizenship, working in the community. They talking about the holistic kid. And that was important, man, I got chills, man. You know, this is the first time something like this has ever taken place, and I'm proud to be a part of it. You see a young Demetrius Johnson and any of these young people? I see every last one of them could be like me. If I came out of the environment that I came out of and had a strong mother, and the family behind me, anybody can be successful. That's why I know if I can do it, man, anybody can do it. Some and of these young people reminded you of yourself. Man, every last one of them, you know. <laughs> but you know what, they, they had an opportunity today to get exposure, to, get, to do something that I didn't get an opportunity to do until I got in college, my sophomore year in college. They had an opportunity to do it while they're in high school and get that exposure and seeing that people truly care about their well-being, and that's what it was all about. I asked a young man if he thought he could change the world. He told me no. Well, you know what? Because you know what? If no one teaches him and show him that there are opportunities of changing things within his community, how in the heck would he feel that he can change the world? We got to continue to set the examples that we did tonight. Now, did you think that young man ever thought, you should ask him, hey man, did you ever think you'd be in this environment doing this? He probably would say no. And then you know what you should have said to him? Son, if you can be here tonight, you can make a change in the world. Let me bring up uh, my first uh, guy on our lines from Michigan High School, Coach uh, Ferguson. Coach Ferguson, I go way back. Good man, come on up here and introduce your players, Coach. Good evening, everybody. Seven other schools that are interesting. So this year, 
Keep your eye out for Brandon Jones. <laughs> Next I have John Mitchell. John Mitchell is also a receiver, and he also plays free safety. So he, he's a guy that uh, he'll be a two-year starter for us this year. So he'll be one of the big players for Bashan High School. And you notice that both of those are receivers. And you know Bashan football, we like to throw, throw the ball. That's one thing that we do. You know, we, we get the ball in the air. So uh, those are my two players, John Mitchell and Brandon Jones. Thank you so much. Uh, and with the guys, I didn't say that have been funny. But Tim Lampley, raise your hand, Tim. That's my man right there. And Tim, you know what I mean? But I guess thank you very much, guys. I was, hey, remind me, I didn't say your name, but I've been stupid up here, all right? Uh, the next uh, school, the coach, he's a very good friend of mine. He's turned that program around big time. He's done some good things over that program. I'm proud of him. I used to talk bad about him on my radio show. Now I'm a big fan. I'm a big time fan. And you know, I always say big time players make big time plays and big time games. And that's the coach, head coach Cornahan, high school coach Lee Scott. Thank you, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Um, thank the Coaches Alliance, DJ, for this opportunity for our young man. I'm introducing um, the gentleman that will be representing Carnahan um, this year, the two seniors. Um, to my right is uh, Curtis Phillips, who is a four-year starter for me. Um, there um, two to, to both on as a running back and a, a defensive back safety. Um, he's also a uh, three-year first-team all-conference and two-year all-district player. Um, to my left is Eric Williams, um, my wide receiver, free safety, um, had a unique opportunity, got selected to be part of the 707 Rams uh, national competition team this year. Um, we're looking for great things out of both of these young men. And our ultimate goal at Carnegie High School is to get our young men in college. Um, last year we were blessed and fortunate that every one of our young people that played for us was able to go to college somewhere next year. So these young men will be our uh, young men. Thank you, Coach Scott. The next coach, every time I, I talk with him, boy, he's got that little southern draw. Boy, I, I love how he talked though. He's over some of the high school. He's a young man who's, who's really working hard to bring something back. You remember when Sumner, when you grew up, Sumner was the powerhouse. That's right. Now he's doing his best to bring him back, and I'm proud to have him here. Uh, come on up here, coach, man. This is my man. I, I love this guy here, man. Every time I talk to this guy here, I mean, he just, he's up the charts. Coach Redville, man. Love this guy. How's everybody doing? First, first of all, I would like to thank DJ, of course. Uh, I want to piggyback on some of the other guys because more than anything, he exposed in our neighborhood still, and that's what we need. We need exposure. Sometimes our kids, they lack it because they don't have the exposure for people to see them and for them to go other places and go to school. So I, first of all, I want to give a hand clap to DJ. <laughs> First, I'd like to introduce Marquis Smith. Uh, he's a senior. What's special about Marquis is, since I've been here, I'm uh, going on my third season as the head coach. And of course, like you said, I'm not from here, I'm from Texas. But Marquis has been starting on the football team since his sophomore year, okay? This is the longest reigning senior I have on the football team for summer. And he has made sure, he has made sure he's been my cornerstone. So anything I need on the football team, Marquis has been able to do that. And I know when he go on to college, he'll be able to do the same thing. He'll be well prepared. And also, I have Demondre Cooper. Uh, what's different about Cooper is, Cooper is a, he, he plays three sports, okay? He runs track, he plays basketball, and he also plays football. But the, the only, the, the other thing that, that makes him so special, he has 3.2 GPA, okay? He has 3.2 GPA. Now, one thing I like about Cooper since his freshman year, he's been competing on the varsity level. Okay, when you see a guy like Marquise, that's what I want to see. When Marquise get on graduate, he do other things, Cooper gonna take his place. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to start a feeder system, trying to start a program. So thank you. Thank you, folks. 
Uh, our next coach is uh, a gentleman who's coached for a long time. He's became a very good friend of mine over the years. He's now at Confluence uh, Academy, Prep Academy. Uh, coach Seals, uh, you talked about going to be pretty tough. I guarantee you, Confluence is going to be a good program. Before this guy finishes with it, I promise you, they're going to be one of the top programs around. Coach Roy Seals. Appreciate that. I am Coach Rory Seals, head coach from Florence Prep. Uh, we're a living and a half of a pretty exciting team this year. Uh, flanked to my right, Mr. Marvin Williams, and flanked to my left, Mr. Jamil Massey. And to speak on these young men, of course, first my junior, Mr. Marvin Williams, who is uh, about the undoubtedly most talented player that I have, uh, also matches that talent level with his leadership level, uh, his leadership in the classroom, and be student. Also, uh, going out, doing other work outside. Uh, he interned at Priory High School, leaving this year, named my program, giving back, doing his thing as far as coaching with the younger kids, just like we give back to the players. So, uh, I think those accolades are even that much more so, and that much more important to instill in our student athletes to go out. Be sure that you give back, you use your God given talent, of course, as a kind of build to a future, but then you, of course, have to understand that. Uh, your time will pass, and if you don't go out there and build a legacy out there, then uh, the time might not mean as much. So, a lot of shouts out to Morgan Williams, uh, excellent athlete, football, basketball, and track. Uh, one spot away from Gordon State, 100 and 200 in uh, track and field class. Three, we're looking to make a lot of plays, a lot of positions. Use him as basically an athlete. So, uh, very excited about him for the next two years. Morgan Williams. This is my senior, Jamil Massey himself. Uh, words can describe this young man either. He's always been an exemplary student, a uh, member of uh, National Honor Society, 3.6 GPA, uh, plays defensive end, offensive guard, uh, being actively recruited by North Dakota State, SEMO, uh, Truman State, among some others. Uh, very dedicated. The thing about Jamil is being a senior. And being in this new program is how I took on the leadership role with a lot of the younger students. Uh, really committed in this uh, off season, was very impressed in this day, was never late. Uh, probably get about 15 reps at two and a quarter. Uh, the drop of a hat uh, squats about 3.30 and uh, it's gonna look to make a lot of plays for us. Uh, it's great to have your best players also be your most disciplined players and your leaders. And uh, we're gonna look to build uh, a strong foundation on that establishment. Uh, we're honored to be here, honored to be a part of the Coaching Association and Alliance, and uh, we're looking for some great things. So I thank you so much for coming out. Mr. Mark Williams, Mr. Jamil Massey. All right, the next young man, he, he's uh, a guy that uh, is work, working hard, just became the head coach over at Lift the Life Academy, and uh, I like this man. He, he's been, too, I guess, under the tutelage of Coach Collins over at Normandy High School. Let me bring up here from Left Alive Academy, Coach Johnson. First off, first off, I want to say uh, thank you for DJ. Thank you to the coaches because uh, this, with the coaches alliance, alliance is uh, giving Left Alive a little bit more exposure. Because the uh, first question I get most of the time is, "This our first year?" You know, as a program, but it's actually not. So uh, thank DJ and the alliance for you know, giving us great mission around town first. I have uh, Darion Glover. Darion is going to be, uh, will be a junior for us. Uh, finished state uh, sixth in wrestling last year. Uh, 3.0 GPA, uh, varsity baseball player, uh, team captain for the football team. Uh, great, great student, great uh, young man around the neighborhood, around the community. He's uh, involved in a Sular Energy Project uh, around the neighborhood of our school. And uh, he, he's always he's always doing something. He's, he's like a young man, like he's always doing something. He's always doing something. I promise you. I first had to put the two too much. So very nice love. Uh, linebackers, uh, linebacker and fullback for us. Very nice love. And again, I got Dustin Ballard, uh, 3.3 student. Uh, he plays quarterback for Sheila, uh, defensive back for us. Uh, 3.3, like I said, uh, 18 ACT. Uh, uh, he, he also volunteers, uh, what is it, this is how Weinman, a teenager uh, project, he, he helps around the community. Boys in baseball, athlete, wrestler also, uh, great kid, respected around the school. Uh, he also is a great leader, team captain also. So, 
Dustin Valley, uh, Barry I. Glover. Let's like the captain. Uh, the next thing I'm going to bring up, he's really turned that program around up with uh, Gateway STEM High School, and he's a good guy. And I like to talk about his background. He's a former St. Louis U High star and the University of Illinois star. I wish Missouri was still playing in the football. We know he had a first win every year, but I guess it's not happening this year. <laughs> Let me bring up my good friend, Coach Dulick from Gateway Stem High School. Good evening. Uh, my name is Coach Dulick, again, from Gateway Stem High School. Uh, we're really excited about uh, our team this year. Uh, we're trying to get it back to the days when Sheldon Richardson uh, roamed the field and Anthony Pearson uh, roamed the field, who uh, Sheldon Richardson, who's now in the NFL right now, right off of uh, Cabin Avenue. Uh, but uh, we're really excited. I want to thank you, DJ, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, so many times you hear about the negativity in the PHL and the negativity with our inner city kids. But right now, this is a beautiful thing to see these young men in suits and, and talking up there, speaking, and working towards a common goal. So uh, this is a beautiful thing, DJ, and the rest of these coaches. Um, I, I tell these guys at Gateway, uh, you're going to have three opportunities. You're going to have the opportunity to get a great education. Uh, you're going to have the opportunity to serve in your community, all right? And uh, you're going to have the opportunity to play great football. And that's what these, these two guys do. Uh, I want to introduce Joe Collins and Kalen Fields. Uh, Kalen Fields is a four-year starter. He played on Gateway's uh, 2011 uh, PHL Championship uh, and District Quarterfinal Run in 2011. Uh, he is a 3.7 GPA. Uh, he's been on the honor roll, honor roll every year in high school. Uh, he has uh, worked on the offseason at the Edward Jones Diversity Awareness Partnership and serving in the community, and uh, he's getting uh, looks from some, a couple small schools, and uh, we're really excited about him. He plays linebacker and tight end. Uh, Joe Collins, he is a six foot, uh, 186 outside linebacker, plays some tight end for us. Uh, Joe is also a 3.0 uh, GPA, excellent student in the classroom. Uh, in, in his off season, he uh, interns at the St. Louis Police Department, and he uh, interns uh, with the Matthew Dickey's Boys and Girls Club. And uh, he is an excellent player. Uh, he's worked himself up to being a captain this year, and uh, he's also getting uh, uh, some looks for some small schools. And uh, we're really excited about these two young men and about Gateway football this year. Thank you. Uh, the next coach is from Roosevelt High School. He's a very good friend of mine. I call him my little brother. He calls me every day and wants me to do something for him, but I do it. And for some reason, I just, I'm crazy about this guy. And we go way back when he first started in coaching, and he and I, I just have a real just special relationship with him, and I really appreciate it. That's Coach uh, DeAndre Campbell from Roosevelt High School. Thank you, DJ. D. Roosevelt High School. <laughs> um, like I said, my name is Coach Campbell from Roosevelt. I've uh, been there nine years as the head football coach. Uh, very excited about this season. Uh, we had a good, good summer. Uh, these guys put in a lot of hard work this summer, uh, especially during all season. Both of these guys ran track and uh, they worked really hard. I'm going to first start with uh, Deontay Campbell. Uh, of course, he's my son. Uh, it was a very hard, very hard transition uh, for him coming to Roosevelt, um, you know, from K-3, Lindbergh School District, he said, um, his mom and I kind of battled him coming to an inner city school, how would he adjust? Uh, he's maintained a 3.4 or better since he was his freshman year. Uh, honor roll since his freshman year. Uh, he's uh, been recruited as an athlete. Um, he had an invite to the University of Illinois Junior Day uh, like this past year. Uh, he's going to uh, be asked to play um, a lot of positions this year, uh, preferably quarterback, but he doesn't want to play it, but we get somebody else, of course, go wide receiver, but that's his main position, wide receiver. Very excited to have him on the team. Um, I think he's going to do some exciting things, and um, he stays disciplined um, and stay away from the girls. So, so this is Deontay, my son. Deontay. <laughs> Uh, this young fella here um, is Corey Watson. 
Uh, we transferred in last year from Miani. Uh, played running back at Miani. Played for Roosevelt last year. Uh, did some exciting things for us last year, but this year he really, really turned up his game a notch. Uh, he worked really hard on the off season, all summer, first one in practice. I mean, just going going an extra mile to uh, get better this year. Had an excellent, excellent camp at Normandy. Um, last one about our coach that I had the feeling about. Um, he rushed for 2,000 yards, Terry Washington of the University of Colorado. He definitely has that capability, and we're definitely looking forward to looking forward to him uh, making some exciting plays for us. He's also being recruited by Missouri Baptist, Missouri Valley, get some interest from Illinois State as well, and also my son um, get a lot of Division I AA interest at Division II. So we definitely look forward to these guys making plays for Roosevelt High School, and we hope they make plays. And I take care of Terry Watson. When you talk about this, uh, this uh, little brother, he is. But this guy right here I'm about to introduce, he's the head coach of Wyoming High School. He's been a part of our foundation for the last 15 years. During the summer program, he runs all of our football camp. He's a very disciplined coach. When you see his players, they're going to be very respectful, they're going to be very disciplined. This guy is one of the backbones of our program, our foundation, the Features Johnson Charitable Foundation. And he's a guy that I've depending on a lot of times when I need to get information about how to handle situations with these young men out here. It's my good friend, the backbone of our sports program, football program, the foundation, Coach Jim Collins from Norway. Thank you. First of all, let me just say congratulations uh, to DJ and the whole uh, coaching alliance. It's truly a blessing to be uh, among some of the great coaches in St. Louis. I don't think these guys get enough credit when they spend so much time away from their families and the things that they do in the community. So we need to give all these coaches a <laughs> um, I'm the head football coach at the new Normandy Collaborative High School. Uh, to my right is uh, Kevin Black. Uh, Kevin Black is a junior. Um, he has three offers currently from the University of Illinois, K-State, and North Dakota. State and a uh, fine young man. He's a three-year starter for us. He started right tackle for us as a freshman. He'll probably be the top offensive lineman in the Suburban East Conference this year. Uh, great young man. We're excited about it. He's done a, done a do a great job for us. <laughs> this young man here is uh, Kerryon Coleman. This is our signal caller. Uh, young man. He's a young guy in our program, but we're looking for great things from him. Uh, he's really disciplined. He's just a great kid. Very humble. We ask a lot of our quarterbacks, and he's doing a great job. He's working really hard this summer. I'm expecting a lot of things from both of these young men who represent the new collaborative Normandy High School. All right, I got a young man here. Uh, he is with uh, Clyde C. Miller School, and. Uh, this coach not here, so I'm gonna talk about it. Come on up here with me, man. I'm gonna talk about it. Jalen James, he is the senior quarterback over at Clyde C. Miller High School. And I'm gonna make an announcement why I got him up here. Uh, he's thrown 19 touchdowns, 1,200 yards throwing the ball, 650 yards rushing the ball. He's been recruited by Illinois, Iowa State, North Dakota State, Arkansas State, Southeast Missouri State, Tulsa, SIU Carbondale. And let me tell you about the young man. He's the first team all for three years in a row, all PHL, all conference, player of the year. I mean, this kid right here is special. And I'm gonna make this announcement. I know that some of the coaches are gonna be mad at me, but we decided to charter this year when we do the high school games of the week, that one of the games we're gonna be doing is gonna be uh, a career academy. And we're going to do a Gateway Tech game, and we're going to do a Bashan game. So those are the games we're going to do. It's the first time, probably in the last 10 years, me doing the games on Charter, that we're going to be doing two PHL games. And not to disrespect anybody, so I don't want anybody to feel we did that purposely, but what we have to do is look at the schools, uh, the kids that have been heavily recruited, the, the number of kids, and that's how we kind of came up with that thing. Now, however, we also look at the schools throughout the year, and if they're doing well in the playoffs, we can adjust our schedule and do games of your teams in the playoffs. 
But I am really honored and proud to announce tonight to everyone that Charter, the high school game of the week, Randy Carriker and I have been doing it for the last, this will be our 16th year doing those games on Charter. We're going to be doing three of our PHL games. We got, like I said, the Shine, we got Gateway Tech, we got Career Academy, and I am really excited. That is a, trust me, that is something huge for Charter to go and do the PHL games like that. So I'm going to do that. One of, the one of the decisions was made is because of this young man right here, just, just his dynamic ability, the things he can do on the field. And they tell me he's an excellent student too, but I can tell you something. You can tell he's a young man that's here by himself, no coach, no parent, and he's grown up. That's what it's all about, being able to grow up and do it yourself. So take it All right, folks, this is a good time now. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask each one of our media partners that's here to get in front of all these kids. We want everybody here is going to get interviewed. They're going to get pictures of you. I'm our good friend Gentry, thank you very much, man, for being here to take the pictures. And get ready, guys. And let me tell you something. Don't be nervous. Just talk. When they ask you questions, talk. But this is a good learning experience for you because you're going to be put in situations where you're going to have to say something in a spontaneous way. So guys, stay there. The media guys will be back talking to all you guys. So thank you very much. And the parents, thank you very much for coming out. I got interested in football when I was like seven or eight because of my brothers. They played, so they pretty much led the way for me. What do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I see myself in college. Okay. And doing what? What's, what's your plan? Are you um, majoring? And you've yeah, already majoring thought about in, what you're going to major in? Yes, sir. I'm majoring in uh, aviation. Tell me about some of your successes on the football field. Uh, some of my successes are I made 89 tackles my sophomore year, uh, 73 my last year, two sacks, and four interceptions over the last two years. I started varsity for the last four years. What do you think you need to improve upon? Uh, just getting faster and the, like, my leadership on the team, because I don't like it. It's just that I like to see more about myself and my other co-captains. Some of my success in the school is being a leader around the school and helping out do community service and helping out my teammates pick up like when they slacking or something, help them out. Just like doing the right thing. If I see something, go do the opposite. Talk to me about your goals. What are your goals in life? My goals in life is to be in college, being a leader to my little brother, and a lot a leader to my community, and coming back to my neighborhood and giving and giving to my family. The key to winning games to me is defense and also teamwork. You can never win a game being an individual. You always need your team. You, no person on the field is bigger than the team or the program. Um, where do I see myself? If not, if, if I don't make it to where I want to be, I'll uh, fall back on, like, I, I, I want to go to college and major in architecture, engineering, or construction. So if I, if I don't make it to where I want to be, then I have to fall back on. Your coach had some real positive things to say about you. How do you feel when you hit us? Um, I just always stay humble. You know, you never want to get too overboard and get too big-headed because God can take it away just like that, and you'll be left with uh, nothing. So I just try to stay humble and to myself. It's hard to be humble when you're great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's had the biggest influence on you in your life? Um, I would have to say between my mother or my grandmother. It was my grandmother because she strived to make me better, make me the man I am because my father hasn't been in my life. So she's kind of been there for the spots that he kind of fills up. And my mother because she keeps me straight she keeps my head straight, she keeps me going to school, and she always pushes me to do better. Five years, what do you see yourself? Five years. The plan is to be in the pros, playing pro football, but my backup plan would be sports medicine or a physical trainer, um, anywhere, just being myself, basically. <laughs> Trying to give back to the community, uh, give back to my family, and just make sure everything's all good. Tell me when you got interested in football and why. When I was six, and the reason I so I wouldn't be on the streets doing anything like smoking weed or anything like that. I just like to play sports, and it, that's my interest. Who's had the biggest influence on you? My family, especially at my cousin and my father. Um, he attended Vishon, 
and my cousin, he attends OWL right now, and he went to Vashon. What do you see yourself in five years? Living out of my dream, NFL. And if you don't make it in the NFL, what do you mean? Physical therapist. Um, who's had the biggest influence on you in your life, and, and why? My parents, because the way they always help me. They won't stop playing football once upon a time. Told me not to, I kept doing it. Just tell me to go out and I still kept, kept it, and I'm good. Tell me about some of your past successes. Past successes? Well, this past year was my like first first real season because I got hurt freshman year. Successes, uh, I made all-conference team. Uh, finished the season really strong, 15 touchdowns, like 700 receiving yards. And uh, I made the 7-on-7 seven -seven national Rams team, so I got to go out of town and with them, so that's a success too. When did you become interested in football and why? I came interested in football when I was six years old. I just started playing when I was six years old, and I got into it, and I love it. Uh, ath athletics is very important to you. Why? It, it, like, it keep me out of trouble. Like, if we went for athletics, I don't have nothing to do. Probably, I'll probably be in some trouble or something. So, athletics just keep me, keep me, um, and it, it keep me occupied. You don't want to win football game? Everything positive on the field of the nigga. Pick your brother up and lay him down. You will sign him so your brother can say stay next to him. My goals are like is to be the best person I can be. You know? Either whether it's balling or just uh, having a family, you know, going to college. And, and as you said, the best person you can be. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Who is Jamel? Uh, I'm a positive person, uh, of spirit, you know. I, I, I'm nice. I like, uh, <laughs> I'm nice. I got interested during my fifth grade year, uh, watching my dad coach at Kirkwood, and I just it just seemed fun at the time. I just wanted to be a part of it, and, and that's when I got into football. What do you think the key to winning uh, football games? Um, the key is working as a team, really, because once once one slice off, the other one has to pick them back up so we can start working you know, helping each other out so uh, win these games. Who is Deontay Campbell? Um, a funny, athletic, people person, God-loving young man that loves, that, that loves, that will love anybody. That, that's nice to him. That's what Deontay Campbell is. Who's had the biggest influence on you? My father. I say my father because ever since, ever since Pee Wee League, He's just been there for me, buying me my jersey, buying me my clothes, buying me my shoes. That's all he ever does. So I say to my dad, he's my biggest influence on me. What do you think is going to be your biggest challenge? Switching from a high school schedule to going to college with practices here and there in between classes and then sticking up and getting all the work done in college. What do you think you're best at out in the football field? Uh, I'd say I'm smarter than a lot of other people. I make not the best decisions, but better decisions, and I put myself out there for the team. It's basically playing for the person next to you instead of playing for yourself. Because like, if you only play, if you play for yourself, like you might get your uh, your teammate hurt. But if you play for the next person against you, like with y'all working together, y'all will come with more. Character development is the main emphasis. Uh, your character is the foundation of your team. That's that's the reason why. That's how your team is going to come up and, and going to. You're going to develop somewhat of a uh, what I call a feeder system based on your character guides. Because your young guys, your freshmen coming in, they're going to learn from your character guide. And then when those character guides graduate, your freshmen are going to become the character guides and replace the ones that just graduated. So it's, it's real big. It's real big. Character is the biggest emphasis. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is just getting them college ready. You know, the football field should always be an extension of the classroom. And so one of the big, biggest challenges is making sure that our kids graduate with a lot of academic integrity a lot of social responsibility and ready for to be, be a world-class competitor, you know, because really that's what football should evolve around. It's not just football, but making sure that our students are ready for whatever sector of life they go into. So that's our challenges that we challenge we have every day. I think I think character development is one of the biggest things, but I think more important the the model of that character development. A lot of times you ask people to do things that they have no model for. So not only character development, but being the character 
that you're trying to develop maybe be even more important than developing the character itself. Events like this help develop uh, or help to introduce life skills, don't you think, for them? Most definitely life skills. Um, one of the things about being able to stand and deliver and, and be who you say that you want to be. Uh, because one of the things is this event like this requires every kid to say it and then go do it. What I think the biggest challenge Their is going to be, challenge is going to be I think our kids school. today need to be learn how to be self-sufficient, how to learn how to take care of themselves. I mean, they're not when they get in college, they're not going to have mom and dad to take care of them and you know make sure they're getting up for class and things like that. And you know they're going to be able to take care of themselves. And uh, I think that's one of the biggest challenges, and that's what we preach to. Uh, do you think this was a very uh, a very good event to help him with maybe character development, maybe life skills? Yes, I do think it is a good event to help him with those things. I think that um, it gives him. All right. Encouragement to know that he'll have a little help to get into a college, some type of, you know, some type of help to get into a college. Uh, do you think that with all of the things that are going out in the community, and you know, you hear about you know, uh, violence and things of that nature, do you think this has been a great outlet to keep him on the right track? I do. I do believe that this is a great outlet to keep him on the right track because it gives him something positive to look forward to, to keep him off the streets, to, you know, look, be encouraged and encourage other children in our community to do better, just like, you know, him and having people to, to reach out to him, that it gives him a reason to look out, to reach out to some of the children that's under him. It's about these kids, man. It's about giving our kids an exposure of uplifting them and showing them that people do truly care and want them to do good things and be successful. That's what this is all about.